So, circles, methods of placing circles accurately in CAD, specifically using AutoCAD. So I've created a file that you should see provided with this video curriculum or at CT Online. It's an AutoCAD file that you see here named circles and arcs methods.dwg. Obviously an AutoCAD file. That file is open now in CAD. I'm sure that you or an instructor could adapt a um, make a similar file in other CAD programs like SOLIDWORKS if you're working in uh, 2D plane geometry and need to know how to place circles accurately. So we'll start here where it says start here. The first file, the first area to look at is circles, six methods of placing circles. We'll see in this video several ways of placing circles accurately, but we've got to assume that you know how to turn on a few options and understand their significance. First, we'll turn on object snap, just for the purpose of snapping to get objects snapping correctly. There's the object snap mode right there. I'm going to leave it off for now just to see what happens. If I was to place a line here and try to get on point C, the end of this other line, even if I zoomed in, I'll try to place it right on the end of that point C, and there's this new line and I'll zoom in and you can see I didn't even get close as I zoom in. That's because we don't have object snap turned on. When I do turn on object snap, then when I place a line, a circle, an arc, uh, I'll be able to get the beginning of it or the center of the circle accurately to this endpoint. Little green things pop up and meaning endpoint, midpoint, different things like that. And I talk about that in some other um, videos. So there now we see that file, even if we were to um, zoom in on these two lines, they're perfectly matching at starting and end points. So that's object snap. And one more thing, we'll turn on dynamic input so that we can see, dynamic input is right there, we'll be able to um, see different uh, options and type in numbers and see this information right in the drawing area not having to constantly look down at the command line. For instance, I'll uh, leave it off for now. If I type in line and start a line, I don't see anything up here in the drawing area to help me with any hints or lengths. I've got to look way down here at the status bar and the command line in order to figure out any helps and lengths that I need to use. But if I have dynamic input turned on, then when I start a line, First of all, I can see some prompts to other types of tools or whatever tool that I'm trying to use. And I see some prompts, for instance, uh, it might be some helps about where to place the line, how to place the line, in this case, the X and Y coordinate system. So I'll start that at the end point of that other line. And I can see the length right here. I can type in a length and an angle. So there's different things I can do since we have dynamic input turned on right there. Also, if you're using my file placing arcs and circles.dwg, which is an AutoCAD file, you'll need a few pointers. This is a large format file with lots of detail that you'll need to zoom in to complete the exercises. Sometimes things kind of go crazy when you're zoomed out. In this case, I hit Z for zoom, A for all, and I'm zoomed all the way out. Already was, actually. So when I zoom in on one particular exercise, the circles turn to polygons. That's just an appearance due to AutoCAD's method of working with complex geometry, like a circle with infinite points when we're zoomed out. And then to fix that, when you're zoomed in, just simply type in R-E-G-E-N. Stands for regenerate, and that's the command, R-E-G-E-N, regen, not regen, but regen. And it, regen it regenerates the circles to make them look like circles. So that's R-E-G-E-N for regenerate. You can do that anytime, it's not destructive to your file. You can do it over and over as you zoom in. So now on to our subject at hand. How to place circles. There are many methods of placing circles. For instance, we'll see here in the drawing toolbar that there are six methods. Center radius, center diameter, two point, three point, tangent tangent radius, and tangent tangent tangent. This is rather confusing to some people at first, but I guarantee you, you'll be an expert at doing all six methods by the time you're done watching this video and practicing a bit. This first method is a regular method of placing circles. It's the default or standard way of placing circles if you don't specify any other method. Just click on the icon for a circle right there, 
or click on the first circle that's in that group of circles right there and you've started a circle. It's waiting for you to specify the center of the circle. Now I'm going to get out of that, just escape. I'm going to show you another method. C for circle is the shortcut, as you can see there with a the pop-up, and I'll just hit enter to accept that. To specify the center, we'll just simply use the snap mode to get on the end of that line at point C, and we'll start dragging the mouse. You don't have to, but we just want to see if, if it really is making a circle. And we'll type 3 for our radius in this case, and hit enter. Remember that enter is typically the key to hit to say that you're done with typing in a dimension. And that's that. It was that simple. C for circle, specify the center, type in the radius, and hit enter, and you're done. That's the default method of placing circles, the center radius method. So you can practice that now, either on your own or by using this file, circles and arcs methods of placing, and then come back here to the video. Now, the second method of placing circles, the center diameter method. And it's by placing a circle by its center and typing in the diameter. You see it there, but in reality you don't have to use that. You could just use C for a circle. Choose the center of the circle and then hit D. It's one of the options if you were to hit the down arrow there. It's one of the options diameter. D for diameter, specify for instance, in this case a unit, five units for the diameter, hit enter, and you've just created a circle, a second method, the center diameter method. The next method is the two point circle method of placing circles. You can use the tool up there and find the two point method, or just as well just to hit C for circle, and since we have the option called dynamic input turned on, we can see that there's some options waiting for us due to that little down arrow. If we hit down arrow, we can see we have three point, two point, and another one, TTR, which we'll get to in a minute. So we'll go down to two point. So there we go. We're going to we are going to specify this first endpoint right there as the first point, and then the diameter of the circle is defined by the second point. We'll just pick that other endpoint there. We don't even have to know the distance. It just fits the circle right there in between those two points. The circle is defined by the distance between point A and point B. So the next method is the three-point circle. We'll just move over there and go right into it. The three-point circle is defined by any three points. Any three points in a plane, probably besides a straight line, can be made into a circle. In this case, we'll point, pick points A, B, and C. To do that, you can either use the mouse and go up there and pick three-point circle, or again, C for circle, down arrow to pick the option 3P. So there you go. You just simply pick point A, point B, and as you go, it's being defined as the circle that can go through points A, B, and C. The next method of placing a circle is the TTR method, or tangent tangent radius. Uh, again, it's one you can find up there under circle, tangent, tangent, radius, or just simply hit C and down arrow, or in this case you have TTR, and that's enough for it to know that you want to do a tangent, tangent, radius method. In this case, we'll place a circle up here in this area with a radius of 4 and tangent to that circle and tangent to that one. So all you do is just pick out the first circle that you're tangent to, the second circle you're tangent to, and specify the radius, and there's really only one circle that will be there. You could have specified a point over here if you had specified closer to these points that I'm pointing at, and then it would put the same uh, size of circle but tangent on the other side of these circles. So it does make a difference on where you actually pick those tan tangencies. Um, next method, circle, tangent, tangent, tangent. The desired circle can be tangent to really anything, a, uh, an arc, a circle, an existing line. You can actually make anything that's the tangent to that. So we'll do circle. In this case, we do have to use the mouse to invoke that. They didn't give you the shortcut to that. So tangent, tangent, tangent. And all you do is just simply pick your three circles that you'll be tangent to and your circle is placed. Just to prove you can also do that with lines, here's a tangent, tangent method but using circle, tangent, 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 and pick the three lines, and there you go. The same thing can be done between two circles in a line. 
pick your two points and your circle and there you go so here's one more additional helpful hint if you've been paying attention to the command line down there you may have seen that most of these options were always available the entire time when you hit C for a circle for instance you can see the options three point two point tangent tangent radius all those options were right down there the entire time you can use your mouse left click or you can simply just look down there and type in 3p in order to get the three point circle and so on and of course uh, the whole entire time you could have used the down arrow anytime you see a down arrow on the area up here on the screen that kind of gives you a hint that there are some options so kind of learn from this uh, in terms of any AutoCAD things learn be learning how to use the command line down here or use the options up there and one more side note you might be used to using the spacebar to repeat the last command like this if I was to use first of all a circle let's say an unusual type of circle not the default center radius but let's say I'll go to three two point circle and when you get done, you decide, you know what, I want to do the same exact thing over again. I remember that spacebar repeats that. Well, yes and no. You really have the default method of placing the circle going right now, the center radius method. It's not the two-point method like you thought. The reason why is you just have to remember that center radius is always the default method of placing circles unless you specifically pick one of those shortcuts down there or pick one of the other methods down there. So there you have it, six methods of placing circles. So now if you haven't already done so, stop this video and open the file called Circles and Arcs Methods of Placing DWG and practice this. I've given you the same file that I've been using all along with the answer key, so to speak, all showing the completed exercises, as you can see there. So then when you're done, come back here and I'll show you how to place arcs. So, just as there are many methods of placing circles, there are many methods of placing arcs. There's actually a total of 11 of them, as you can see right there. And we're going to highlight about five of those because the other ones are so interrelated. We can just be experts at five and that'll be enough. The first method is the three-point arc. That's the default method. You can use the mouse and it goes right there. Being that it's the default, really, you don't have to use the mouse. Just simply A for arc, hit enter and you're specifying three points to create the arc, just like three points that it took to create the circle. In this case, though, it's going to be a beginning, a midpoint of the arc, any not necessarily a midpoint, but any point along that arc, and then point C, the end point of the arc. The next method of placing an arc would be the center, start, end method. You can use the mouse, and it's right down here, I'm going down here, I'm skipping these other ones on purpose. Center, start, end. The reason why I'm going down to that one is that's the method you can get to if you did arc. And rather than the default, just hit down arrow. And that's your only other option you get is center. So in this case, you're going to pick, pick a center, a start point of the arc. And then you're defining the arc now with the end point. The end point, just, in this case, just point C. In reality, these three methods are all interrelated. Center, start, end, center, start, angle, and center, center, start, length. In reality, you're just simply defining the end of the arc by either picking a point, the end, or typing in an angle, or defining the length of the chord that defines the arc. And so those three methods are all interrelated. You can get to those different methods if you simply start that arc pick the center method, get your start, and then you can see how you can have some options there. You're either going to pick a point for the end, or you're going to type in an angle, or you're going to define it with the chord length. So either one of those are related. The next method of defining an arc is the start, center, end method. For this you have to use the mouse. And so we go to start, center, end. We'll pick our start point, we'll pick our center of the arc, and we'll define the arc as the point that is the end point. So it's very related to the last one, it's just, it's just the order. Again, you can also, rather than specifying a point, 
You could type in degrees right there, or you can hit down arrow and again choose the angle, which is also the degrees of the arc, the included angle of the arc, or define the chord length. In this case, the length of the line that goes from end to start point of the arc. And so those three methods there are really uh, related. So start, center, end, and angle and length, they're really all the same methods. And center, start, end, angle, and length, those three are related because they end in just different ways. The next method that I'll talk about, this has some unique ways to end it, and that is the arc, start, end, angle. So you have to use the mouse and go to start, end, angle, and that's pretty straightforward. Start, end, and then either type in an angle, in this case it would be the included angle that defines the arc. You can use the mouse and just pick a point, or you can actually type in the angle that makes sense to, to what you're drawing. There's another method related to that though, and that is this. I won't bother to show the drawings for this, but that is start end direction. In this case you start the arc, end it, and now you're defining, if you look at what it says on the screen, specify the tangent direction for the start point of the arc. So in this case, you're picking out a line that defines the tangency of that arc. In this case, I just picked that little line right there, and I can guarantee you that that arc and that line are tangent. Last method that's related to that is start end radius, and all you're doing is simply typing in, or excuse me, picking a point for the start, the end, and then defining the radius. You can define it with a point or type in an actual number, in this case 5, and there it is. The final method for making an arc is continue. Now this only works on the last arc or line that you previously drew, so you're going to have to create an arc. In this case I'll just make a quick three-point arc, as you see here. And now I'm going to continue that arc, but it's actually going to be continuing with an arc that is tangent to that existing arc. So continue is the last option there, and notice what it's doing. It's creating an arc that is tangent in any way that you want to create it, either in size or direction that you want to go. That arc there is tangent to the original arc that you just drew. That original thing that you drew could have been just as well have been in a line, a polyline, a regular line segment. In this case I'll just make a line and then I'll continue. And I'm continuing on with an arc, kind of like making the end of a cane, but I'm making an arc that is tangent to that line. So there you have it. You're now an expert, or at least you will be, of all the 11 methods of placing arcs. All those methods. You'll be an expert once you've stopped this video and try all the methods on this file, circles and arcs. And so I've given you the exercises to do there, and I've shown you the actual answers to the exercise in the key right there. So good luck, and be an expert at arcs.